Okay, everybody, hi, welcome. Um, to answer Paula's question, we are going to be recording it, um, and I will be posting it on the career advising page. And many people don't even know we have a career advising page, but it is the link on my signature line if I email you back, and it's also at the end of this presentation, which um, I will put up as well on our career advising site. So today, um, I'm Kim Shorter, I'm our career advisor. I'm also a graduate of the program. Um, and uh, I was really active in ACES, which is what it was called at the time. I was active in it for a long time. I was really interested in computer programming and things. And with the information management degree coming on right now, as well as our information certificates and alumni coming to me as career advisor, asking more and more about what they're qualified for, how do they look for a job, um, what kind of job titles do they look at. We thought we have this first session that's specifically for information management. So this is our first time. We'll continue to do more of these. Um, and so the process for today is that I'm going to speak to you for about 20 minutes or so. And then there's um, three Quicken uh, recruiters that are going to be coming in at around 530. And they're going to talk to you about what kind of skills they look for. Um, and what kind of jobs they offer there. So it'll give you an idea of current employers. Um, if you're not local in the area, Quicken, Loans, Rock Financial, all of those are under the same person, which is Dan Gilbert, and they're a huge employer in this area. They um, started out doing mortgages, but really I went to them a few years ago and said, you know, what you're really doing is data management, and that's what we do. And so. I just introduced our school to them and they've been recruiting actively through our school. They attend our career fair ever since. And so we've developed a really nice relationship. We took the NDSA student group on a tour of their facility where we got to see um, software that they had developed in-house to manage the process of mortgages and uh, seeing whether people qualify and all of that. And so I hope to do that again because I think that was really um, informational and with more and more information management students, I think it'd be beneficial to do it again. Um, so that's a little bit of about kind of where we are right now with the program. I am camera shy, so you don't you aren't seeing us right now, but when they get here, we'll turn the camera on. Um, so I'm gonna go through this a little bit, but I wondered if the people that are online might want to just kind of indicate to me um, what kind of information management you think you might be most interested in. This is not written in stone. You can change, you can evolve, but I'm interested to see what you're, you're interested in. And while you're typing, uh, maybe the students that are in and alumni that are in-house here could indicate verbally what areas you might be interested in. If you don't know yet, that's okay. If you're interested in everything, that's okay. But I'm just trying to kind of gauge your interest. Well, um, Deborah Dorsey, and I'm interested in data analysis and user experience. So Okay, mm -hmm. okay, great. Hello, I'm Alpesh Mittal and I'm interested in data analytics and data mining. Okay, okay, great. Jody, I don't know if they'll be able to hear you back there, but <laughs> I can be loud. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm into data analytics as well um, and data visualization actually is what I, I love. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, I totally get that. And I mean, just most people don't know this about me because it's not my emphasis when I've been doing a lot of the, the career advising and things, but I started out as a market researcher. So I was doing something, I was doing data analytics before it was called data analytics. Mm -hmm. And I was really spending a lot of time in the library to do my work. And I thought, you know, I'd be more efficient at this if I knew how a library was put together. And that's how I came to get my MLIS. Um, so I'm very fond of information visualization, of data analytics. Um, I do most, I work mostly in the archive world now, but I am one of the few people in our field that really is interested in big data with respect to archives, um, because I think it's a fantastic time. And I don't know if you've seen the announcement, but it was an announcement just last night that there's a huge grant that just came out to digitize all the information we know about slave ship entries so we can, and then tracking those people so we can help African Americans track their family heritage. And I get goosebumps thinking about this because this is big data analysis, um, as I put in my Facebook post about it, used to the, for the utmost good. Mm -hmm. So this is really thrilling. I literally do have goosebumps that we are able to do this. So 
what you and this is you know and you can, I'm just contemplating like the data visualization you can do as we get more and more through the analysis of the data once it gets in there and I mean it's just really really exciting so there's a lot out here in the world right now that we can do um, that we have never been able to do before and um, I'm also involved in the National Digital Stewardship Alliance um, and uh, a few years ago we had an engineer from Google say we are now at the second level of um, information of the information economy. So at first we were just gathering. Now we're at the level where we can analyze in mass this information. And so that's why our field is so exciting right now in information management because we're able to do this visualization of huge amounts of data in ways we never could so people can comprehend it. We're able to crunch big data and do analyses um, in both in the historic world and in new content right now with you know, gathering tweets from the Library of Congress and analyzing political trends um, to you know, ma making smart competitive business decisions. So there's a lot out there right now. So what I thought today is I wanted to just go over all that there is out there. No, I actually can't go through all of that because there's too much. <laughs> but I just pulled some job titles for the presentation today to remind you that job hunting is difficult in this field because there's so many different types of titles that titles that they may not be they may not know what they're looking for and the skills we have are what they're looking for and so sometimes we have to sell that and that's one reason we came up with the separate information management degree because then it lets people better understand the skills that you're coming out of that degree with so you might see user experience manager. The short of that is often UX. You might see chief information in, uh, op, uh, um, operations, that's um, CIO. You might see HCI, which is human computer interaction. So you know there's all of these different terminologies that you can use. And so one of the nice things about some of the job sites now is you can search on skills rather than just titles. And that's really a good, a big gift to us on both ends, the MLIS and the, and the Masters in Information Management, because we have so many technology skills that are marketable in very different ways now. We're not tied to a place anymore. So keep that in mind when you're searching that, um, that maybe searching on the skills you want to use might be more useful than job title, because the job title might not in any way really capture what you can do for an organization. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to talk about what people are interested in online. Um, I'm interested in data analytics and database design, okay, and user experience and digitization, okay. So, you know that you're going to be looking for hard skills, and so some of the technology classes that you have taken, you're going to take, and you will continuously take to keep up in the field will be for specific hard skills. Do you know SQL, okay? Can you build a database, right? Can you tweak the information presentation in HTML or XML? So they will want to know that. So that is really important. And we've had lots of faculty meetings here discussing, can we train you on every possible technology skill that might be in every job posting? And we know the answer to that is no. So what our goal is, is to educate you on enough technology that an employer will say, hey, they're trainable. We are never, and no employer thinks they're gonna get somebody for every single skill that they list in our job postings in, in this field. It's just too much. But they can say, oh, well, she doesn't know this, but she knows this, so she'll, she'll come along quickly. So everything in your job application materials really needs to reflect, I'm trainable in technology, right? Uh, and so you really want to make sure you're expressing everything you've been exposed to. Now, you don't have to oversell yourself. Um, you can certainly say basic skills in, intermediate skills in, advanced skills in, okay? Much like you would a foreign language, but you really want to make sure you're expressing to them how much you've been exposed to, okay? Um, the other thing is it's not enough to say, hey, I've been introduced to this. You've got to make sure that you have some hard projects that you can represent. There's got to be some links. 
and the faculty um, is really good about giving you hands-on projects. You might sometimes have to find a place to deposit it so that you can create a link, but some of our faculty, and we talk about this, um, have created those options for you. Um, so you want to make sure you've got links and keep active links um, of projects, whether it's um, for class projects or you do a community project on the side just so you get more expertise, or even if it's for work with, with permit their permission. So you want to make sure that you're keeping um, a list of projects together. That proves your point that you can apply what you're learning in the classroom. So here's an e-portfolio for our, an alum of our program who found a job before she graduated, right? Which is our goal. Um, and so Lauren was really proactive. She went to meetups, she met people, and she got a job from there. This is, uh, she used Behance for this, and this is her, um, her e-portfolio she did for employment, okay? So she's got um, a, basically a card for every single project with a little bit of a visual to show what she did, and she is a user experience architect, okay? She also, when she was here, she was also a lab tech GSA, um, and we worked with her, and she also, um, we worked on some things. She actually did some really innovative ePortfolios, played with different software that I've never seen anyone use for an ePortfolio to try to make sure she was showing off her skills as a creative and productive user experience person. So she wasn't afraid to use, um, I'm trying to think, what's the software that's not like, that's a PowerPoint equivalent, but it's completely different. I can't think of the name of it. Um, so she actually did something in there where people say they get dizzy on it sometimes. I can't think of the name of it now, darn it. Um, so she tried it in there too to see, and then you would go to their pro each of her projects. So she really tried and experimented with things to see what would be innovative. When you're looking for an information management job, it may not, your, a traditional resume may not be reflective of your skills. It might fall kind of flat. So if you're looking for something creative, if you're looking for something that shows you can program, you might want to put your skills to work in your e-portfolio. And I plan to do an e-portfolio training session at the end of this semester. We're still playing with different software, but we're planning to put some things together so that people can use that as a template and move forward and then develop their own. Prezi, thank you, Christine. That's what she did it in. She did one in Prezi. Now, the other thing you want to be aware of that really sells you strongly is your soft skills. Soft skills are really your interpersonal skills. So how do you deal with people? Do you treat your coworkers with respect? How do you deal with clients? How do you approach a project? Those things are important, and those are the kinds of things they're going to interview you on as well. You could look great on paper, but you could come in and be um, – all ego and not listen to anyone else, and you're not going to be a good team member. I always say when you close your ears, you stop learning. So you really want to make sure that you are in your job application materials proving to them you'll be a good team member. Everything we do these days is collaborative. So just like I tell my students, I know you hate group projects, but life is a group project. <laughs> it's the same thing. So you want to show off group projects you've done. You want to talk about ways you've moderated or mediated in the workplace or in student group projects. So you want to make sure they know that you are treating, you will treat people with respect and collaboratively you will develop the best final project. So no one person can know everything. These, uh, all these projects are too complex. And so you really want to make sure you're showing off to them how you can help the team. Uh, so I'm big on volunteering and student projects. Uh, I certainly want you all to get paid for all the work you do if we can. But I will tell you, I myself volunteered 40 hours of my time uh, to come up with an inventory of something and then got an eight-year full-time job from it. Was it worth it for me to volunteer for a, you know, Fortune 10 company and do that when they probably could have afforded to pay me? Yeah, it was worth it. OK, so I do encourage you that if you don't have the exact expertise you want, 
when you graduate or before you graduate, volunteer um, somewhere to do something. And you can be innovative. So, you know, maybe a small community group, you know, needs a great database to track their volunteers or their donors. Do that, then it is work you can put into your portfolio, okay? And it can be something that's your sideline passion like that. Maybe you're a community activist and you want to help. Um, anything like that, you know, great, make a great web presence for a small organization, you know, that helps abused kids, whatever it is. But it shows a community commitment. It shows altruism. It shows that you can be creative and a go-getter to go and, and pursue even this project. So it can be a small project but it still is something to build on. So nine times out of 10, if someone comes to me and is having trouble finding a job, it's because they don't have enough hands-on and therefore haven't networked enough in the community. So people don't know if they can apply what they've learned in the classroom. So it goes hand in hand. And I know sometimes people have been frustrated with us about that, but I had um, a colleague at the Library of Congress say to me, well, we don't send nurses into a hospital never having done with, dealt with a patient. They do student nursing. It's the same thing. We have to do some hands-on to prove that we can do what we say we've learned in the classroom. I've got some quotes to some professionals that I've spoken to as well, and I'm not going to obviously read this out to you. Um, but this taxonomist, and I just kind of bolded what was important, said that understanding how data is stored, how databases and search engine works is really important. Right, data modeling, all of that. And when we first started teaching searching many years ago, we would teach, a, we'd spend a lot of time on how search engines work. Now with Google, they hide those algorithms and we don't exactly know everything that they do. But understanding it as best you can, searching help pages, looking at articles that have delved into this from an academic research standpoint is really important to understand that so that you can design the best interfaces. You can um, understand how to get the data most effectively to those that need it. Um, and then I also got a quote from Lauren and you saw her e-portfolio earlier. Um, she's a use experience architect and I highlighted this. She said all the hard skills she used ladder up to answering does the organization make sense? And will someone know how to use this? Okay. Um, and then for soft skills, she mentioned that you have to have a good rapport with your teammates and you have to actively listen to that, right? And then Derek is also a graduate of our program. And he said, again, he was really focused on soft skills. So what is your process in going through? Um, and he said big data and, and those analytics are really big for what he does. And he does work for a consulting firm that creates websites for companies. And so that's, and he's, um, he's had two strong positions in that one in Ann Arbor, and now he's in Royal Oak. Um, and that's what his takeaway has been from his job experience. So I've got some networking sites here. I'm obviously not going to go through everything, but I really wanted to make sure that we talked about them and that you looked at them. I know um, I, I spoke to all the faculty that are involved in teaching IM classes, um, and they helped us meet with the national list. So think about that. I know ACM is really big. ACIST is, is big. If you want to work as information management in libraries, Code for Live is really good. Um, there's meetups, and that's where Lauren got her job, is working with a Detroit meetup on UX. So they're, they're in Ann Arbor, they're in every location. So that's a good way to network and meet people. And if you're in just getting into the program now, start with the student groups here. They do projects, they take tours, they network, they meet people. And we've had many student groups that have gone national to present at conferences, and that's a great thing to put on your resume. Um, and Jody gave me some hints too that these are some information sources that she turns to, like First Monday Flowing Data Information is Beautiful. Um, so those are also sources that you could take a look at. Um, and these are just some links that um, I pulled together to think about. 
So think about federal government jobs for our alt spring break. Um, we had one of our students who did design um, and did focus groups on a new site for the National Archives. There was a new department created and they gave him an office. He interviewed every department head at NARA to ask what they would want to see in it. Then he did a huge report. He did all this in a week and they would call him for up to a year afterward and ask him for advice. So it was really good. He now just got a job in Naval Intelligence. Um, so, you know, think about, there's a lot of federal government jobs involved in, in IM as well. I'm a big fan of Indeed. Make sure you have a great LinkedIn profile. I have um, uh, a blog post about that on our blogs list, on our um, CIS Ideas blog about how to create a great LinkedIn. That's You can find a lot of jobs that way through that. Um, and then I have uh, Quicken's career site as well. So they are here, so I'm going to start the camera because I'm camera shy. And so they have an entourage, I guess. Um, so just so you know, we've got about 10 people online, and then we've got a few students here. Um, and we're recording it. We're going to put it up on our career advising page so that people can keep hitting it. So we do have lots of distance students, so they'll keep recycling this. So I appreciate you guys coming in today to share with us um, some of your advice. Before I switch it over to them, do you guys have any questions? Oh, Ben, Dr. Ben is <coughs> online and she said a lot of this is taught in 40 and 74, 60, yay. Okay, so I don't see anybody typing, so I'm gonna take mine down. Do you have anything you wanna show or um, should I just? There's a, I did have a PowerPoint okay. I sent to you yep. earlier. Perfect. All right. So I'll introduce us as a whole from a broad brush standpoint. And then these are these are the experts over here. So they're they're the ones you want to direct any uh, industry questions to. But I'm here more from an overall quick loans perspective. My name is Buddy. I am the uh, university relationship manager that manages basically the half of the state that we're on. Um, so my job is to go to different schools. Um, I'm in charge of exter external engagement, sponsorships. Anything that, that really that touches a school, um, that, that's my job. Um, but I also represent Quicken Loans and the family of companies. Um, it's 120 companies. Um, most of them are based in downtown Detroit. Uh, with that, though, we recruit for 14 of them. Uh, so those 14 companies, some of them you may have heard of, Quicken Loans, Title Source, Bedrock, uh, Zenith, we're the third largest provider of football helmets in the entire country, uh, Fathead, which is a very common one that most people have heard of, um, some smaller ones, maybe that you didn't even realize that we own, like Jack Casino, Greektown Casino. Um, we own we own them as well, so we do some recruiting for them as well. Um, we are big on the internship side of things as well as the full time side. Um, for example, interns uh, we bring in a thousand interns every summer, um, and that intern doesn't have to be junior, senior status. We've taken high school seniors all the way to PhD level. Um, we can find something sort of for everybody in between as well. Um, so with that being said, um, we'll wait till the, uh, till the presentation comes up. But yeah. no problem. I'm a fast talker. I talk <laughs> so, <much. laughs> um, so with that being said, though, um, full time wise, we have roughly, I would say, 350 open positions posted right now. When I say 350 open positions, those are unique, specific positions. Um, we hire much more than that on a regular basis. Um, new positions popping up at all times. Um, IT-wise, we are the number one company to work for in technology by Computer World Magazine. So we just didn't give ourselves that title. Um, we, we, we went to Computer World Magazine, they ranked us. Um, so we've actually been ranked number one for the past five years in a row. Um, it's because we have a very unique culture within our IT area. Um, colorful walls, people flying by on scooters, tossing footballs, uh, as well as a unique thing called bullet time. Uh, bullet time, every Monday for half a day, you get to do essentially whatever you want, um, as long as it's gonna help progress yourself in the industry, in your career, in your, your education. Um, you can study, um, work on a, on a unique project, you can build a robot, I've seen people create new businesses and the, the business has actually become a flourishing business underneath the Quicken Loans family of companies. Uh, that's within Rocket Fiber, which if you've, if you've ever heard of Rocket Fiber or Google Fiber, uh, we're in the fiber optic internet. Right, uh, yeah, so 
Um, the three of us at the end of the table here are from the user experience team at Quicken Loans. Uh, my name is Matthew Rosanna. I'm Liz Jofuza. Mm -hmm. I'm Ashley Begley. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we work on, we have a user experience team with <coughs> our IT group. Um, we work on a lot of different products uh, that people use to get uh, online mortgages or interact with us in certain ways, communication tools. Um, so, and today really quickly kind of what we'll talk through is kind of what we do, a little bit about us. Um, we'll talk a little bit about UX at a high level. Um, we'll talk about some of the different job opportunities within the UX field. And then some of like the skills and traits I think that we look for in UX people and that, you know, that you'll kind of see throughout the industry. Um, so, our team is made up of, we have UX user experience designers, we have user experience specialists, and user experience analysts. Um, those are the, the main roles we have on our current team. Um, my, my role is the UX designer. Um, I've been kind of working in this industry since, like, I guess 2003. Um, I started out as a fine art major and didn't know what to do with that. So, and I kind of like the internet a lot. So I started kind of like designing websites and learning on my own. I've done a little bit of uh, web development work, uh, a little bit of like some digital photography stuff and um, kind of worked my way into being like an in-house product design person before my time at Quicken. I've been at Quicken for five years now. Before that, I was working at a company called Cengage Learning. It does like e-learning tools, like right. library databases and stuff. Yeah. So, I worked in-house with their development teams making those kind of um, like applications that students use, right? In like public libraries or in classrooms and stuff like that. Um, can you tell us about your role? Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a director of UX at Quicken. Um, I've been there about eight years. Started as a, I think I was hired in as a creative director or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> My background is in design and advertising, a business. So um, my role now is more about continuing to advocate for the team and figuring out what the right direction for the team is, um, and just making sure that we're supporting the right stuff at the right time. Um, but yeah, I still keep pretty close to some of the design stuff. Okay, great. Uh, I'm Ashley, uh, pardon my cold. Um, I feel like I'm the most useless to this conversation uh, because <laughs> I, I started as a psychologist. I'm a, I'm a psychologist in trade. Um, I'm a social cognitive psychologist. And um, that's, kind of, that's where I started was understanding humans and how they um, react and interact with their given environment. Well, that's human-computer interaction. That's right. Right. It is. It is. It is. Um, absolutely. So uh, from there, obviously, you get into that world, and um, you are immersed in it all the time, and you can speak that language, which is nice. And so um, I s stayed in um, the education space for a long time, working with labs, I worked on a wide variety of things, everything from digital space like I'm in right now uh, with website design and things like that to physical space design to um, tangible things right robotics and things like that so um, the beauty of of the industry is that you can kind of go in between the thing that you're working on doesn't always matter right the um, what matters is that interaction between the two right so I've been able to do quite a few different things um, in, in my career, working on um, a wide variety of products, obviously most recently, working on Quicken Loans Digital. So uh, that was a good segue hey. to our point. Hey. <laughs> because so something, that's, you something that's unique to, I think, our team is, right, like our goal a lot of times is we're keeping our end users in mind, right? We're thinking about our clients, who's using and who's interacting with us. So I think that's what makes, I think, our role in product design and user experience a little bit different than a traditional design or development uh, team. Um, so 
And a lot of those things that we design for our end users today are things like we do responsive websites, mobile apps. Um, we do some internal software stuff as well. Um, we do have, uh, I was watching my face saying that, do you know how to read this? Uh, <laughs> I do. Actually, it does. Okay, Actually, so we kind of put together this infographic <laughs> about like the variety of experience in our team. Um, maybe yeah, we have, we have this infograph <laughs> that, you know, if you saw it, would rock your world. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> probably like, I'll put it up on our site if you yeah, can sign it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, the <laughs> point of it is um, we, we have quite a few people on our team with a wide variety of roles, and um, collectively we've worked on. And we have numbers on here just to give you an idea, like 95 pieces of software, um, 263 websites. We've done a lot of different things. The point of it is to say that we've worked in software, we've worked in gaming, we've worked in websites, we've worked on mobile apps. Um, like I said, songs have worked on physical space or tangible products, right? And the collective um, knowledge that we have has really spanned across multiple industries. So obviously at Quicken, we're in the financial space, but we've worked in manufacturing and engineering. We've worked in um, marketing and market research, advertising. Some of us have been in healthcare and medicine, um, obviously finance. Uh, some of us have some military and legal background. Um, I know somebody on our team worked heavily with the police department. Um, uh, obviously computers and IT. Um, when you get a company that actually focuses only on computers and IT, right? which is actually pretty rare. Mm -hmm. um, and then entertainment, arts, e-commerce. So the point of it is the skill sets that we're looking for are similar skill sets to a wide variety of industries out there. And that um, when you choose to move into something like user experience, you're gonna gain insight that can translate across that time and space. And it's a skill that can develop not just in depth, but um, you know, horizontally, mm -hmm. that you can really move between things and allow for a lot more career and personal growth, mm -hmm. if that should interest you. Um, if you're anything like me, I really like what I do, and I enjoy um, doing that all the time, but I, I'll get bored. I like to move in between mm -hmm. things and try new things, and um, being in such a flexible type role will allow you to do that without getting bored. You don't always have to be looking for the, for the next level up. There's always something else to learn um, going wide as well. Can I ask a question? What associations, professional associations, are you involved with? Any of you? Yeah, so UX in general is a pretty, um, it's like, in, it's pretty in its infancy in terms of like, uh, professional development, right? So, so if you think about like medicine, there's like ten thousand professional associations, right? Business, like that's not even that's like such a broad term. There's like twenty thousand right. categories, right? UX specifically has really, I mean, you can trace back UX for a very long time, um, but it really has only been founded as an industry. Um, it's twenty years for about twenty to thirty. Years. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have to imagine with that that the um, professional development opportunities are still small, although they do exist. So things like um, UXPA, which is User Experience Professionals Association, comes to mind. Mm -hmm. We do get heavily involved with like HCI, which mm -hmm. is the community interaction. There's some service design associations. There's also some CX, which is customer experience, which is a little bit broader than just mm -hmm. interface design. Um, and there are some associations within there. So there, there's CXPA and things like that. Okay. There are opportunities, although I would have to say that you're gonna get more from local meetups mm -hmm. and um, getting involved in, in your own um, area than you might uh, going to one big conference, conference mm -hmm. a year. And the reason that is, is when you go to those big conferences, because these industries are so wide, Right, you're going to get a lot of noise that you might not actually be interested in. Yeah, that right? it's just not going to apply to what you're doing. Right, whereas when you go locally, I mean, you're going to get a lot more uh, of what this area is looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So clearly, there's a lot of automotive around here. Right. So you go to a local meetup, and there's going to be a ton of people talking about safety and health and automotive applications, right? Um, if, if 
Now, if you're somebody that wants to put, you know, get outside of that, and, and those other things might be helpful moving mm -hmm. forward, but I would definitely start with the smaller meetups. You just get more meat with the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, eventually those things are great to go to, but mm -hmm. starting out, the yeah. local stuff is great. And it might, it might depend too on the area um, that interests you the most. I think I pulled together some different like job opportunities or titles that you might see mm -hmm. you run into. So we have things like user research, uh, you know, usability analysts, we have information architects, uh, interaction designers, visual designer, UX designer. So you might find that once you have an area of uh, interest within UX, it might make more sense to look to target that, right? So like, if you're into visual design, you might look to something like AIGA, mm -hmm. right? That might be a, a network for you to join. Um, you know, information architects, you're gonna have a lot of like, people that are more like content strategy. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, there is a variety, I think it's, since UX is so broad, um, mm -hmm. I think it does help to once you find an area of interest to focus on that. Mm -hmm. um, but the, so those are some of the different titles. Yeah, there. and that list of roles you guys will get, um, and the roles really matter um, to how you apply UX. So it's right. great to think about UX as a practice and a way of thinking that can be applied in multiple different ways. And these roles really apply them very specifically. And so that's when you get into mm -hmm. more of the um, professional associations that we enter to. And there's a lot of UXers that go to a lot of conferences that aren't UX specific, right. Right. Be going knowing that they want to apply the practice to that discipline. To their yeah, content. Mm -hmm. So in Obviously, depending on your area of interest too, we we kind of there's some different skills that go along with each one of those. Um, some that we called out right, but some more that might want to lean on the visual design side. We have things like page layout, interface design, uh, some graphic design, image editing, and some production work. Um, some that are more about the user experience. We have you know skills like findability, search engine optimization, um, information architecture, site mapping, wireframing, things like that. Um, that's where our strength would definitely be yeah. in school. Yeah. Okay, cool. And yeah, so and that that could go. So we also have some other things that are like usability testing, um, accessibility, project management, and then we have some like coding specific things, right? Some people that have actual like CSS, HTML, right. some JavaScript knowledge, like those things mm -hmm. come in handy too. But uh, but yes, information architecture, site mapping, organization, that type, that stuff is really, really important. I think with like information architecture and uh, some UX roles. If you don't mind me, I can, I just, I don't know everything that's taught, taught in every class, but I know that like we teach Python and we teach HTML and we use XML a lot because we're dealing yeah. with data structure. Um, uh, we're doing a lot, we have information visualization classes. Um, uh, I mentioned project management. Um, obviously database construction has been big with us for since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, about 2,000 years back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so I mean, that's kind of what, what we're looking at for skills. We do do some wireframing. We have an information architecture class. So um, just to, you know, just to kind of blend blend in what yeah. you're looking for. So, you know, we, you know, looking at job postings, we're looking at like Hadoop and, you know, certainly other things, including, um, oh, I'm losing my mind on what I was going to say. I mean, we do CSS, um, SQL, all of that. So, you know, what kinds of, I mean, I know you're looking, you look for hard skills, but no one's gonna come in and know and have exactly every single thing yeah. you want. So how do you deal with that? Well, most of, some, a lot of the stuff you're mentioning, we actually don't even deal with on our team. We're definitely more towards the design research. Um, but dealing with, like Ashley mentioned, we have a lot of people on the team that come from a variety of backgrounds. Right. Um, staffing up the team with strategic leads is one of the ways we deal with that mm -hmm. to make sure that there's always um, people to help the newer folks. Um, right. Looking into training programs too for us internally, uh, like online stuff mm -hmm. that we can beef up skills with. Um, pairing on the team to make sure that people are cross yeah. sharing skills. Um, and you, well, the other thing that may be unique, I think, I don't know, this is, this is definitely true on our team, I don't know about other UX teams, but you're definitely not gonna do only one 
thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> there is, there's a lot of collaboration. There's a lot of communication. There's a lot of like, this might be your core responsibility, but at some point you're going to get stuck doing some other stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That could be, stuck. yeah. <laughs> you might have the opportunity to <laughs> expand your skill set and collaborate with one of your other team members to learn more about a new skill. Yeah, that's, good. Good. that's good. I think that that collaboration <laughs> part is important too when you're looking to come in to multiple roles you're looking. So, for example, hearing a lot of the skills that a lot of the students might possess, it sounds like um, in the data analyst world and in our BI and informatics areas. Yeah that's going to be really huge for them. Mm -hmm. Letting them know in an interview, in a um, conversation, that you know how to work well with people who think like us mm -hmm. can be really important too yeah. because yeah. that role is really a translator, right? Mm -hmm. there, you've got all this messy, confusing information. How do I translate that into something that makes right. sense? Mm -hmm. And being able to communicate with people like us who ultimately have to bring those insights to life mm -hmm. is really, really important. So that's a soft skill, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, that mm -hmm. if you can, you might not have all every hard skill on the list, but mm -hmm. if you can tell me that you understand what it is to, to maybe practice UX, you understand what it is when you're bringing those data visualizations to life, to make them usable and understandable, and that you can have constructive conversations with those who are going to leverage that information mm -hmm. is huge. It's huge. It's <laughs> definitely huge. And bringing right. something to the table that shows that mm -hmm. can be really important too, right? Because everybody wants to say it. Yeah. So. Right. I mean, it's not enough to have that narrative. You've got to prove it for sure. So. Yeah, I feel like when we talk with, you know, potential people that are going to work with our team and stuff, we ask how and why a lot, right? <laughs> like we're interested in the process and we want to hear more about your methods and how you got to that point. It's so for us, it's always not just like having a skill or the end result, it's about what did it take to get you there, mm -hmm. right? Because that's something that we do. That's something that we do when we, when we're working on products and keeping our end users in mind, right? A big thing for us is empathizing with that user, right? We want to look through, you know, put our, our feet in that user's shoes and learn from what their experience is. So that's really important for us, right? That, that, so that's something I feel like is really unique to our team. And yeah, that storytelling aspect is incredibly important. And it, obviously the best way to say that you're a storyteller is to tell a good story. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, being able to do that is, is really, it's really important. Mm -hmm. Almost as if, um, I actually went to, you asked about professional associations. I went to a conference last year that talked about um, sort of penetrating the space that we're in, how to get a you know, career involvement in, in that area. And they did talk about how do you tell your experience or what you want to do or how do you sell your skills as a story, right? Mm -hmm. Stories have a nice curve, right? With the mm -hmm. at the top right. and the resolution, yeah. right? Being able to do that in a setting, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we're, we're the same way. That's interesting. I mean, we usually talk about it, how to sell yourself as a branding, you know, creating a brand for yourself, but we hadn't thought about it as a story, so that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. stories resonate with people. Mm -hmm. they, sure, they make you feel something. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And I think, too, having being able to share that story, right, shares, like, your variety of experience, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's why we kind of introduced that thing at the beginning. It's like, we all come from very different backgrounds with very different skills and some of them overlap and mm -hmm. we have to pick those other skills up from other people and mm -hmm. something that someone learned in advertising like we might yeah. be able to like combine with my experience and library databases things yeah. like that right i think that's right. that's really important a lot that comes from the collaboration and, and mm -hmm. working in groups and right those i think people. one of the unique things about quicken too is that they honor your experience with hobbies you know, not every other place yeah. would love to hear that you're a photographer on the side, so mm -hmm. you're super geeked right. out about, yeah. you know, that that piece. Right. But we do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We definitely like the, to hear the breadth and depth of what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, I know in, in my past, I would get feedback that's like, well, you didn't really do that in a job, so like, don't put that on your resume. 
And, uh, you know, you can't really say that you did that. And I'm like, no, every weekend I'm doing this thing. Yeah. And like, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? right. I probably know this more than I know my job. No. <laughs> um, so, you know, right. don't be afraid to pull in those, mm -hmm. those little nuggets, because like you said, that's unique to your brand and mm -hmm. helps to tell your story. Mm -hmm. And it might stack the deck in a way that maybe you don't have anyone yeah. that does that. And right. that, right. that's yep. something you can use. Yeah. So don't be afraid to share that. One thing I wanted to mention too is I know you you mentioned that um, you know you bring in about a thousand interns in the summer, but you also have interns year round. So for those of you that don't have full time jobs already and are you maybe fractionally employed, um, you know it might be a good time for you to look at working with them in the fall or working with them in the winter as well. I, I would I want to jump in on that. Okay. So our, our internship program outside of the summer, like we have a thousand mm -hmm. in the summer, right? But we're we're a lot smaller looking in the fall and the winter mm -hmm. more okay. because the Michigan's, Michigan State's, the other mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. they're, they're in session. We can't have those students. So it's, right. it's a lot more uh, feasible, you know, okay. for the Wayne State students, for the Oakland students, uh, because you guys are just down the road. Yeah. Um, with that being said as well, it is a, it is a full-time job. It is paid. So, mm -hmm. and we're able to work with your schedule. Um, when I say full time, we're mm -hmm. looking for at least thirty plus hours. So. Okay. Um, but it, it's a great way to get experience yeah. while you're going to school, especially right down the road. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I would say you might even get a more in depth experience in the winter. Oh, fall. for sure. For Just sure. Because summer, there's a thousand. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we yeah. had what, five or six. It gets a little heavy. Yeah. And it's like. like Flocks of yeah. them every yeah. year. <laughs> it's like a flock of interns. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they, so I mean, fair. with six interns, we had six interns this last summer. They they did um, a project that they sort of self planned mm -hmm. um, with very minimal direction. But unfortunately, the direction was way more minimal than I wanted it to be because there were six of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. right. And it was just hard. So, like, if, if you're the only intern on a team, we have 21 team members, right. you're getting a lot more right. from all of us. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention too, um, I don't, is Jennifer Gustafson still online? So, so she runs our information management practicums. So she might be in contact with you um, to talk about that because that's a for credit option they have so they can get more hands on yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah. yeah. That was actually exactly what we were looking for in the summer. We just couldn't get it to work. Okay. For anything. <laughs> yeah. And we've been doing that for a few years, yeah. but I'm glad I can connect yeah. you guys. Yeah, so. that'd be great. I bet. Uh, <laughs> geography. geography is a variable because I think, I think she's referring to our online students. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's true. Do you ever have um, virtual interns or virtual at all, or do they need to physically be in your space? For the internship space, um, I'm going to say it has to pretty much always be on site. Okay. Um, 99.99% of the time. Okay. Uh, just because the internship program with us is an experience as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't want to just have an intern just to put them to work. We yeah. want them to see the culture, the yeah. environment, um, the other things that we're doing around town. Um, yeah. We have a heavy investment in not only Detroit, but also Cleveland and Phoenix, yes. Arizona. Right. So we want to show them the investment in the culture. Mm -hmm. that, that's over half the internship. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But at least we can keep that in mind for our local students. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, and then even if we want to look at the summer for the for the uh, virtual students, mm -hmm. um, we house at Wayne State over the summer, mm -hmm. um, so we do have the opportunity and we do pay for relocation things like that. So, okay. Yes. Okay. That being said, I have seen situations where if you want to take the time to come here and make it an investment as your first internship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have seen where the rapport has been built, they've been exposed yep. to the culture, and it's not unheard of to extend an internship. Yeah, yeah. Remote um, role, yes. If you want to, to take mm -hmm. that as as a slightly risky investment, mm -hmm. to, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, but still, I mean, the internship is not risky though. I mean, no. the, you know that they get the they get the experience and build their resume. So what I don't want people yeah. here is like if yeah. you come for one summer, yes. you can just like do yes. right. 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 <laughs> really not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is yeah. once you get that exposure that you're looking for, they can be very yeah. accommodating. Yeah. On the role that you're yeah. One thing I want to ask too is a few years ago, I'm faculty advisor for the NDSA student group, which is the National Digital Stewardship Alliance, which is really about 
preservation of digital content going forward. Um, and we took a tour of um, the Quicken offices. I was working with Lanisha Gunn. Um, and it was really great to see some of the software you guys have developed on your own to manage your mortgages and all that and all the big screens and stuff. So maybe it's time for us to do another student trip or tour of your that's, facility. That's me, yep. Okay, so that would be great. So maybe arrange that in the spring. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's no problem at all. Did you have anything else that you wanted to talk about? I think we've covered anything. Is there any questions? Yeah. Is there anything else about skills you want to share that you'd like? I mean, I know you guys have a real diverse diverse skill set, so it's hard to nail that down. One of the things in the faculty end, and I mentioned this earlier, but I don't think you guys were here, was that we know we can't train the students and graduate alumni and every single tool you might use, especially for you have some proprietary things that you design yourself. Um, so, but we want to make sure students can express to a potential employer that they're trainable on all technology, right? So is there something you look for that indicates that, or is that mostly in their story that they share? I think the story is a huge part of it. I would say when you're looking for jobs, <laughs> when you're looking in the UX industry, know that the, the, even the roles, the titles that we read off to you, or you're going to find more and they're going to be confusing. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> and right. especially in this area, if you're local, um, it's very new. There's a lot of tech companies around that are just like, just yeah. now like, hey, maybe we should hire the one person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. I mean, be honest about what you know. Mm -hmm. If you have an experienced person doing the hiring, they will know yeah. that you're making it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, or you're over someone yep. yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a lot of times, locally especially, you will get an inexperienced hiring manager in UX. Not mm -hmm. inexperienced in hiring, but inexperienced yeah. in the industry. Yeah. And they might inadvertently put you into a role that you're just not ready for. Yeah. You yeah. don't want that either. No. So yeah. um, I would say just be honest. Mm -hmm. um, if you're showing, like, I, it's nice to see somebody that's learning already on their own. Mm -hmm. That's always like a good right. thing. It's like if you're learning on your own, you're going right. to continue to learn when I give you more resources. So right. that's good. If you just put UX on your resume and you can't speak to it, you can't tell the story, and right. you haven't done any research, like I'm not even gonna. Right. You know, we're not taking the next step. Like that doesn't indicate trainable. Right. In one of my classes, I had some um, web pub some of our folks from web publishing at the library system here, and they do a lot of you know what you do too. Mm -hmm. Um, and and so I had them talk about how they got those jobs, like what skills do they get in? Yes, they went through the formal education, but they also would say, hey, that program is really interesting. Just because we don't have a class in it doesn't mean I can't lock myself away for a weekend with, sure. you know, CSS for dummies and, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. and learn it and come up with a project so that, you know, I can work on it. So, um, so I, 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 you know, this is continuous, professional development in this field. And so you're going to have to be able to show that initiative. So I think that would probably be something that would be encouraging for you as an employer, right? To see that they they just dug in and learned something. I also um, want to point out the value of smart investments, right? So when you're taking the time to learn a skill like that, you know, you're really investing your own time. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you're investing your time in the right yeah. So I really like job um, posting maybe. Yeah, I think that using words and phrases like such as is going to be really important in this scenario. For example, if you can talk um, very intelligently but conceptually about what you're trying to accomplish, right? So for example, if I'm saying, well, I like to, I like to do a lot of <coughs> prototype testing to get feedback on the work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I like to put it in front of users. Sometimes I might use something like Envision, such mm -hmm. as Envision. Doesn't mean I can't learn the ten other things, right? Right. But I can speak intelligently about mm -hmm. one thing that I know how to do really well, and you go, "Oh yeah, I know that program." And then they might ask, "Oh, have you ever used Marvel?" Mm -hmm. And I'll right. say, "No, but isn't isn't that similar?" Yes, yeah. it is. Oh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. we could probably do that, mm -hmm. right? I didn't just say that I know how to do Marvel, no big right. deal, right? right? right. Yeah. What I'm saying is I understand conceptually what right. the purpose is, and I'd have no problem obtaining that skill. So before you go and like mm -hmm. get a laundry list of these skills and invest a lot of time or potential money in learning, yeah. 
um, make sure that you know you're learning the right things at the right time that are going to be useful to whatever is moving forward. That being said, you should have enough um, breadth of skills in your toolbox, right? Breadth of tools mm -hmm. in your toolbox to be able to conceptually say, this is what these things are for. I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And I can continue to do more of that if you like that. Okay. Right. I look less for um, knowledge of tools, <laughs> okay. honestly, because I mean, like the design tool, the white wireframing tools, if you use one, you can figure out the other one. Yeah. I mean, like Ashley said, I mean, they're all pretty right. much the same now. Um, but do you think in the way that you need to be thinking conceptually? Do you Soft. get it? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you can learn a piece of software. Mm -hmm. That's that's not a big deal. And if, and if you can't, and you but you can tell like, <laughs> the amazing story, and you just like, for whatever reason, it's like the wireframing thing is just not your thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is going to do it. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I honestly spend, like me personally in my day to day, I spend more time at a whiteboard wall mm -hmm. working with a fellow team member than I do in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's just yeah. where I, that's how we work, that's how we get stuff done, mm -hmm. that's how we communicate and visualize things. Okay. There are times where I might need to go away and mm -hmm. help do something else with this skill yeah. that I have. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it is. It's much different now. I think with this emergence of this this industry, like I remember looking for my like second job mm -hmm. in like 2003, and I remember it was just like every job in Metro Detroit was like, gotta have automotive, must know Flash. Right. That was yeah, it. Right, Our, right. Like that was it, right? <laughs> yeah. And I was right, like, yeah. well, okay, so I don't have those two of the things, so I guess I won't ever have another job, <laughs> you know, and. Yeah. Seeing how that's changed and yeah. interviewing candidates over the years and seeing like, you know, looking at a, porf a design portfolio and like, I don't just want to see your final, final project. Of course, of course, that's your final project, but I want to see right. how did it how start? Did you get there? Yeah, right. like, great. where did it break down? Why? Yeah, I, like, that's what I, I want to know more about that, right? Because those skills yeah. are yeah. going to help you do well in this industry versus just like, I can create a final showpiece, right? Okay. Like with this skill that I have. Yeah. Not Generally, either. if you see a portfolio and it does not have process at all in it, mm -hmm. and it says UX, mm -hmm. I question whether or not they put that label on there. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Um, only because, uh, like, that's a that's a graphic designer's real yeah. portfolio. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, final yeah. finished products. Is, that's a, that's, a big that's what visual designers do. Yeah. Okay. Um, but a UX designer, somebody in that industry, has got to have the process okay. part figured out. And that's what our alumni were telling us in their quotes too. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. I do feel like that translates to other roles as well. I'm not just within where we are. I mean, there are plenty of other roles that are open again that would value you being able to communicate effectively mm -hmm. yeah. your thought process yeah. Yeah. and how you came to the conclusions that you came to mm -hmm. over the final skill set. Right. that you yes. came to the table with because that skill set means absolutely nothing if you can't communicate what you've done and share and get other people to understand and be on the board. So the better you are at, I guess, explaining and almost teaching, right? Right. A little bit of if you can, if you can teach it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, then the better off you'll be valuing that over another check mark. Okay. Well, this has been really, really helpful. Do we have any other questions online? Yeah. What should I mean? What do you do? So my name is Ty Edwards. Um, I started out here in end of September um, at Quicken Loans, and I was part of the uh, university like recruiting intern. I am now transitioning into like the university relations. Uh, role the same thing that uh, Buddy does, so okay. I'm here uh, with him, just kind of getting the yeah. past stuff and just kind of learn yeah. the best I can. He was a fall intern, made himself the obvious choice because there wasn't once again a thousand around. Not saying that the thousand <laughs> you can't make yourself the yes. obvious choice, but when there's three hundred, yeah, it's a lot easier. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, he made himself the obvious choice for a full time role. Oh, okay. yes. Great yes. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I mean, this is super helpful. I don't see any other questions right now, but. Do you, do you guys have any problem with us posting this to our website just for your advice so that our students, okay. Because we do, we have students literally all over the world now oh, cool. and so they're on different time zones and yeah. so they'll they'll view it at their leisure. And then if you have any questions, you can send them my way. Yeah, I will. Connect with whoever, yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm sure some of our faculty will want to contact you as well Perfect. in teaching IM, yeah. and I'll get in touch with you about yeah. taking students over for a tour. I'll leave you my card as well. Okay. I know you have my contact. But yeah, I yeah. So. Okay, yep. great. I've got some over there. Yeah. So um, I want to thank you so much for thank your you, time, yeah. and um, hopefully I'll see you again. Yeah, so, yeah thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Um, so just for, for, for the students and alumni then, um, I just wanted to um, make sure you know that I'm available, obviously, to do mock interviews, cover letters, and resumes with you. So and please check out our career advising page. The link is here. Um, and it, and uh, it does have a lot of information in there for you. And I'm going to build out more information in your information as well. OK? Thanks, everybody. Thank you.